don't even feel like yoga, all the way to your laundry detergent, go to their websites, look for the sustainability aspect of each and every product you buy. You will do this. They have joined Asia. Now, maybe they join you because they think it's. Hey, we're going to present a building uh, committee and the uh, Carter and Ann Cartwright as well. On the topic of United Nations policy document, Agenda 21, and he'll have a uh, question and answer period afterward. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Ed Camo, for the record, E-D-C-O-M-E-A-U. I live in Brookfield, New Hampshire. It's about two hours north from here on the border of Maine, uh, on the northern uh, eastern side of Lake Winnipesaukee. I moved to uh, New Hampshire about two years ago, but I've been following this United Nations agenda for about 15, almost, actually, it's going on almost 20 years now. This started actually 20 years ago. Now, how many here have actually heard of Agenda 21? <coughs> Who knows what it is in depth? It's scary. <laughs> so you sense that it's not right, but you really don't know what it actually is. Does it have something to do with turning over all of our assets to the United Nations? Does it have what? <laughs> Anything to do with turning over all of our assets to the UN that happened uh, it, it several could. years ago? It could. In our now, about depleting your assets so you don't have anything to turn over. Now, you've all heard of the U.S. Constitution. <laughs> yeah. Now, the reason why you've heard of it is because the you know, states didn't all agree on it in the beginning. But they heard about it, they debated it. That's what we're supposed to do in the United States. We're supposed to debate our ideas. If you don't agree with somebody, you have to sit down, you have to debate it, and whoever's correct will win. What's disingenuous about Agenda 21 is it's in every single federal department, every state department, and in every town office, but no one knows what it is. That is very dangerous, especially with the power that they have. Now, this is your homework. Does everybody have a pen? I don't have that. Now, basically, Agenda 21 started in 1992. It started in 1992. Uh, the United Nations had a gathering in Rio de Janeiro, and they came up with a policy document. A hundred and at that time, that's exactly 20 years ago this year, 174 nations, including our own, got together in Rio de Janeiro and talked about the environment. It was all it all revolved around environmental justice. And social justice. <coughs> <laughs> That's what it basically revolved around. They all came up, they got together, they all came up with this 40 chapter document. It's a policy document. It's incorrect to say that the document is a legal document. Most federal agencies that, <coughs> that follow the policy are basically getting away with it without you knowing it because technically, legally, since the federal government is the only entity that can have an agreement with an outside foreign body, they have to create a, a, a legal way of introducing that policy. And the way they do that is by the wonderful executive order. Now, I'm not going to go into detail of which ones they were, but I will talk about the executive order that started by Bill Clinton the next year. It was called the President's Council on Sustainable Development. This entity actually doesn't exist now. I believe it ended in 89. But this policy, which is on this uh, CD-ROM that you can go home and read, actually embodies everything from the United Nations level to the, through the executive order to every single federal department. It basically created, it created a, a, uh, a sustainability office in every single um, department. Now, on your sheet, you have a bunch of things you got to fill out. Basically, very simple. What Agenda 21 does 
it has to achieve this goal. Now this paradigm that they're using can be used anywhere. You can use it for education, you can use it for, uh, for criminal justice, you can use it for anything you want. It works very well. Basically what they're doing is they're trying to get to this goal, environmental and social justice. How do they define that? Yeah. Uh, how do they define that? How do they define social justice? Basically, social justice basically a good thing. stopping pollution, stopping poverty. That's basically what it is. That's, that's what they said. Now the three columns are, they have to control, in order to get environmental justice and social justice, you have to get to control. <clears throat> Generally, you have to control something. Specifically, you have to control something. And this is all control. And then how you're going to specifically control it. Now, I want, to, <clears throat> I want to wake up your critical thinking. If you were tasked, let's say if you all work for the United Nations, you're all the 174 nations right now, actually 194, and you were tasked to come up with a solution to environmental justice, which is stopping pollution and environmental damage, and also stopping poverty, that was your task. The paradigm is you have to control these specific things. Now, what? There's four specific things they, they need to control. What do you think they are? <coughs> Population. Okay. Specifically. Oh, I'm sorry, what generally? That would be a specific. Oh, oh this is education. Okay, I'll just write them down. The first one would be land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Property rights. Property rights. Property rights. Water. Yeah. Just land, because what happens with the land? It gets polluted, <coughs> it gets... But you have to control the land to stop the pollution. There's no other way you could do it. You have to come up with a mechanism for that. <coughs> the second thing... Government. The second thing would be... The air. Is air, because it gets polluted. You have to control it. The water. third thing... Water. Would be water. And the last thing... <coughs> would, be, would be airways, that, like, community, like um, noise. Or think of something else that actually uh, gets gets uh, polluted or causes pollution. Industry. Automobiles. Or industry. But what is industry used to function? Energy. Energy. Yes. So energy. Why does that have to do with social? Because everybody uses all these things. We have impact on every one of these. So to to affect to affect pollution and and uh, poverty, you have to you have to literally have a tight control on these on these three things. Now specifically, specifically under land, what would you have to control? Ownership. Ownership? Property rights. Well what's what's on the land? You said property, right? Uh, resources. Right. So private property. Private property. Which is property. What else would you have to control on the land specifically? Building. Farming. The resources like logging or mining. Well, that would be under, that would be open. You're, you're talking about something you're doing on the land. On the land, yes. Yeah. What else do you do on the land? Live. Live. No, well, yes, yeah. but. Mineral grow rights. Food. Grow food. Grow food. <laughs> grow food. Yeah. Farming. Some food Some production. You say those got down. <laughs> food production. <clears throat> just, we're just going to go through the next one. We'll add them as you go. Under air, <clears throat> what gets polluted for air? Emissions. Emissions, it could be, what does everybody exhale? Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide. <laughs> water that conquered. <laughs> carbon comes dioxide. From, that should go under It comes energy. from where, though, right, Gary? Yeah. Yeah. Now, for, for water, what do you specifically have to control? If water gets polluted, what, is, what are the water sources, basically? What do you have to control? Aquifers. Aquifer and <coughs> The, uh, the rivers. Waterways. Waterways. Okay, so Waterways. Would you say lakes? Lake. We got oceans. Yeah. What other what other water things are there? Streams. Aquifer is Aquifer. Yeah. Groundwater. Yes. Groundwater aquifers. Wells. How about wells? Isn't that all the same thing? Yeah. 
Now, rain also. You're saying you have to control rain. Well, in, a way, in a way, they do. Now, under energy, <coughs> what do you specifically have to control in, in energy? To remember, to, to, uh, to combat pollution and the, the population. <coughs> so, I just heard something production, right? So, power plants and, so. and how it's used. Yeah, yeah usage. So you have uh, consumption, maybe? Yeah, availability. <coughs> Transmission of it. generation, you kind of understand that that's what you'd have to specifically control now. This is what you generally would have to control. This is what generally they were tasked to have to control to stop the pollution and the uh, and, and poverty. This is what specifically they have to control, and then they had to break it down one more time. First, what's their control mechanism? How are you going to enforce it? What are you going to use to enforce it? Government. You're going to have to use government to enforce it. Now, can anybody tell me what specific departments control land? Zoning, EPA. Department of Agriculture. Or EPA. Oh. It's funny how you picked EPA first. EPA. Uh, what about? Agriculture. Interior. Right. Interior. Rest Department of Interior. Interior. Perfect. Army Corps. Or Department of Forestry. Army Corps of Engineers. What about um, Homeland Security? No, what, I'm, mean, ser I'm serious, Homeland Security. Now they have the White House Rural Council. Mm -hmm. All 25 of those agencies are foisted mm -hmm. onto private property in agricultural areas, which is almost impossible to believe, but it's true. Rural Council, I got the, I got the executive order right here that he started last year in May. Well, like fish and game or wildlife or something. Or, uh, and so all those, all those specific departments. Now, remember, you, somebody also picked food production. What controls food production? What department? Oh, USDA. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We, if you're in the legislature, you know all this. What controls what? Now, what about, you, you mentioned here that your planning board put in, uh, they did a lot of conservation easements, did they? Put a lot of land in conservation. Yes, they were. Well, they, they, they try. Right? So, yeah. Every year. So conservation easement. So conservation. Because that controls land. Now, what about historical things? So historic, historic districts. Historic, historic preservation. District, yeah. Historic preservation. So also called heritage sites. Yep. El Chip and all those. We've got heritage sites. That's at the state level. Well, yeah. 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 <laughs> well if it's now, semi recording of this. Yeah. If we skip seen. down to air. What specific enforcement tool does the federal government have to control air? EPA. 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 EPA again. So. Who else? What else? You, you, there's a bill in the House right now for it. R. R. G. G. I. R. G. I. Greenhouse Gas Initiative. We got to get rid of that. Yeah. Are you trying? <coughs> cap and trade. Cap, yeah, cap and trade. Yeah. <coughs> cap and trade. <coughs> yeah, cap and trade, which is basically RGGI, but okay. Now, um, a very important one it was passed back in the, uh, I believe it was the '60s or '70s. I'm sure I can be corrected on that. Clean Air Act. Yes. Yes. Ozone transport. The Clean Air Act. Now there's a, there's another agency. Um, uh, it's called the New Hampshire Association of Regional Planning Commissions. Yes, yeah, the planning that? commissions. Yeah. Sure. So you have regional planning. Yeah, they try to abolish that this year. <coughs> now regional planning, you know, this is in every one of those. Now for water, how what specific enforcement tool do you have to control water water pollution? EPA. Oh, EPA. EPA, what else you have? You have uh, DES, statewide. That's state right. D, you have state D, so New Hampshire. DES. Now for rain, how do you, how are they going to control rain? I think, think right. of that. How do you, 
control rain it, and what enforcement tool are you going to use? What department? Military. Not a specific department, but runoffs. Runoff. That's Control right. runoffs. Okay, right there. You have laws that you have to specifically, when you make a parking lot, when you do anything, you can't use impervious surfaces, you can't do this, you can't do that, and it's all to control uh, runoff. I don't know how it is in uh, New Hampshire, but in Oregon, uh, there's some somebody who's containing water from their house. The law against that, because you're, you know, I'll go into the law of the sea treaty later on, but that's the ballpark. It is that's funny that once rain hits a roof, it becomes dirty or becomes not rain anymore. It becomes uh, like run the gas, run, yeah, like the gas station canopies. Once it hits that and then comes to the ground, it's not the same as the rain that's coming directly to the ground. Correct, but they have to make sure that you put retain, retention ponds in it, and what are they doing? They're controlling the water again. Right. Now, under energy, what specific enforcement tool controls energy in this country? DOE, Department of Energy. Department of Energy. Okay. What else? It seems to show up in every one of these. EPA, EPA. EPA again. Got EPA again. Now, what else under energy is also in air? Which well, there's a nuclear power um, administration. Nuclear regulatory commission. Yeah, and there's probably some for oil and gas that's similar. Okay, now what controls, um, now you have RGDI up here for air, isn't it also affecting energy? Yeah. <coughs> sure. You've got RGDI again affecting that. Because under energy, there's consumption patterns, there's natural gas, the pipeline. <coughs> oh, recently. Clean air act. Clean air. Uh, the the <laughs> refinement, consumption, manufacturing, and you got light bulbs too. Public yeah. Utility yeah. Commission. Yeah. Light bulb. Public Utility Commission. Is that? That's, that's all part. That's right. They're all part of that control. Now, I know this seems really simple, but when the, when the feds, when our uh, federal government went to the United Nations and made the agreement, and they agreed on this goal, they can't, they cannot make us adopt it. So again, they did the executive orders to create the departments. One of the executive orders created a sustainability department in every federal department. This is a flow chart up for the USDA, and you'll notice, you go on their websites and you'll notice that each one of them will have a sustainability department. This department is specifically tasked to incorporate the policy that's in Agenda 21, but they don't have to say it's Agenda 21. It basically can refer back to the the um, executive order, because in every case, the federal government will only say to you, and you're going to hear this in the state capitol too, you're going to have people say, we are not implementing Agenda 21. We are only implementing federal mandates, because legally that's all they have to say, because it's not really technically the United Nations documents. So in every single, in every single uh, federal department you have, the um, you have the sustainability department. Now, what's kind of frightening is in You're not terrified already, you're not paying attention. What's that? You're not terrified already, you're not paying attention. Yeah, I think what, what you're going to notice in this is that it's affecting everything. Now, I, you're not part of Stratford Regional, you're part of the Southern Southern Ocean Planning. Okay. Now, there are nine RPCs, Regional Planning Commissions, in the state of New Hampshire. If you look, this is their, this is their um, commissioner handbook. If you turn to their mission statement, it reads, the actions that they foster uh, will foster sustainable development and an improved quality of life in the region. Sustainable development balances economic prog progress with environmental protection and community well-being. This all comes from this, this original uh, uh, Bill Clinton who put in the executive order to start, start this process. So, and you'll actually see in, this. In fairness, so that's, there's nothing wrong with that statement. Oh, no, that's what, well, they come, it's very easy. If you come up with the right statement, there's really no way you can argue with it. That's why usually they're trained to say, um, well, what's wrong with sustainable development? It's, it's a key word that you really can't argue with. So, but that's, that's not it. The argument that I have specifically is that no one knows that this is what they're following. If we agreed on all this, then that would be okay. We debated it, but they, they don't. Now, the American Planning Association shows up in every single one of these because this is how they have to do it. Our 
our republic is a bottom-up republic. It's not a bottom-down republic. They are forcing all this stuff down upon us to control all of these things to get to these to get to this solution here. And you'll notice that in every one you have the EPA, and in every single one of these category, categories, the American Planning Association is in it. Every single category, you'll notice. This is by far not the end of the presentation, but this basically is what Agenda 21 is. It started off perhaps nobly, maybe not. We haven't debated it, so we don't know. It started off to protect the environment, and, and reduce poverty around the world. We agreed on it, and we agreed to implement it. If you go to every single country that has signed this agreement in Rio, they all have similar enforcement aspects with their, they don't use executive orders in other countries, but similar, similar things, and all so they can incorporate it in every single country. All of the, uh, all the uh, colleges, all the private schools, Every single one of them in the nation, they use that 40 chapter document for their, their training. All the youngsters coming in to the training a generation of socialists. I mean, it's, this thing is huge. It's massive. Right now, <clears throat> speaking about, mm -hmm. right, speaking yes, about, I said the veteran. Oh, so you have the international uh, yeah, so the baccalaureate. Yep. Yep. We're putting the, I mean, they're putting the blame, but. Other departments, like Department of Transportation, aren't there other ways that these departments will somehow affect uh, the result of all of these to encompass the entire um, the entire nation? Let's say on on whatever they can do to regulate, will they bring them closer to complying with this Agenda 21? Absolutely. Every, every so all the departments, day. not just EPA, there are all the other departments that. Can now, when you have, when you have, if you have came up with this paradigm, you know, just say fictitiously, we're sitting here, we're the United Nations, we, we came up to this, this is the goal we're supposed to do. There's one thing missing. How else are you going to do it? Okay, you have enforcement, you know what you're going to specifically control, you know what generally you're going to control. But what's the biggest thing that drives this? You can't do this. Enforce private we'll property, attack on private property. The people that implement it voluntarily. That's huge. What is the machine that runs this? This doesn't happen just the United Nations. United Nations. If you have to, if you, if you're the EPA, you get up in the morning, you drive to work, you do what you're going to do. What do you, you need to be? You need money. Money. Yeah. So funding. The way this is set up, this, and this is the reason why you have to respect this document is because it's so well thought out. It's brilliant. I would stand up in front of the UN and tell them that you. This is so well thought out. I, I just, I'm almost jealous of it. It's, it's so well thought out. This technically can't fail, and this is the scary part about this. It can't fail because once you incorporate the non-government organizations, there's 3,000 plus of them. Once you have legislation to control how they're trying to accomplish this, you'll notice equally the NGOs step in and they offer grant money. And it's all to drive the same thing, which is they say now, environmental justice and social justice. I mean, it, it's, it's, that, it's that easy. And it's so brilliant because once they lose some ground here, they're going to continue on using the, the, the non-government organizations. And technically right now, how do you, how do you prevent a non-government organization from getting money from the private sector, no matter who's giving it, and giving it to the town? People need money, especially now, and they're going to take it. And that's it. As long as they have fiat currency and they can crank out paper money, they can fund those grants, then that machine keeps going. Absolutely. I would think. Absolutely. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the Syracuse cultural workers. I like, I like people to tell the truth. If people are principled enough that they believe that this is the way we should go, being the United Nations or this type of policy, this type of structure, then at least be honest about it. They're honest about it. They create booklets that schools use and for, for children. Uh, sustainable solutions for the earth. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. When you read their 
Can you read some of the things they say in here? It says here, um, people who create culture are legitimate workers who deserve to be recognized as, as valued for their work, not patronized. Third, that the process of creation is based upon the desire to improve the lives of people, not just for a deterrent of profit. Fourth, all of us in some way are capable of being cultural workers, cultural workers, if we can only free ourselves from the, and I'm not, I'm not talented paralysis, that, that the elitism and com competition produces, I said that wrong, I am not talented, the paralysis of I'm not talented that elitism and competition produce in our capitalist society. So apparently they don't like capitalists. Which, hey, if they're honest about it, that's good. Chapter 25 in the United Nations Agenda 21 is your youth and children and sustainable development. If you just read this chapter, you will see how they're incorporating the policy. 25? It's chapter 25. Um, remember, I'm going to hand you this disc out so you can be able to look at this. Now, verbatim, You'll notice that if you go to your, if you go to your, uh, now that um, that group you cited uh, back over there is that an NGO or is that part of the U who are they? Syracuse. It's it's a group that it's a group that fosters peace, feminism, sustainability. Justice liberation <coughs> since 1982. They're all they're they're basically just promoting the policy. And, and they they have bumper stickers. Well, and that's okay posters, though. But they also re receive grant them. money. Yes. They receive grant money. And the way you see, receive grant money, for instance, if I want to put a uh, for farming, if I want to put a greenhouse on my property, they'll give me a grant and they'll pay for that greenhouse. Now I have to do what they say. I have to do it the way they say it, but they'll give me a greenhouse. The way they get grant money is they have to basically show that they're, they are promoting the policy. So they, they introduce the, the whole mantra of sustainability, uh, being positive to the environment, and you know, but people will honestly will just volunteer money and give this to the organization. There's nothing really wrong with that. I just, you know, I just want people to know that it also is targeted towards your children too. Now that's at the, the, the younger people. The University of New Hampshire. I also respect a lot of people in the U University of New Hampshire because they are principled in what they believe. There's a, uh, a professor there, and he is the professor, he is the first professor of the sustainability department in the UNH. His name is Tom Kelly. I talk about him a lot because he's, he's honest. He believes that this is the right way to go with this. He is uh, the first director of the Office of Sustainability Programs, or OSPs. He's also a founding member of the Northeast Campus Sustainability <coughs> Coalition, working to coordinate activities in New England for the United Nations Decade of Education and for Sustainable Development. He, he actually defines, he actually talks about Agenda 21 a lot, and that's what I respect, because at least he does, he does talk about it. He, he defines sustainability as a social reform project that envisions a reorientation of the entire international community towards the balancing of economic viability with ecological health and well-being, which is also spoken spoke about in the President's Council on Sustainable Development. Such a vast social change agenda brings with it significant questions as well as challenges. And he goes on to say, in a contemporary sense, the principles, practices, and science of sustainability grow from an international consensus on appropriate actions to advance health and well-being of the world's diverse communities in the face of unprecedented threats. This consensus emerged from rigorous debate, which I don't recall that debate in this country, and discussion within the international scientific community as well as the international political frameworks under the auspices of the United Nations. These principles, as articulated in Agenda 21 and related documents, point to institutions and culture as the object of critical reflection and reform that exists well beyond natural resources. So he's honest and he believes that 
that this is something that should be taught in schools. Now, in the University of New Hampshire, they also have programs that I don't know if you're, I don't know if you're aware of some of the titles of some of the programs they have in here. But they have, and these are, uh, these are programs that you get credit for. You have sustainability sustenance, sustainable, it's called sustainable table. You have, you have a lot of um, uh, courses you can take. Now I noticed under climate and energy in, in the University of New Hampshire, one of the biggest contributors as a non-government organization to teaching children and staff is the International Council on Local Environmental Initiatives. You've, most of you have heard about that. ICLEI. ICLEI. It's called ICLEI. But people sometimes make the mistake of saying that the International Council on Local Environmental Initiatives, or ICLEI, is the UN. It's not the UN. It's a non-government, private organization. They helped write Agenda 21. So it's improper to say that, that any de federal department is incorporating ICLE into there. So you have to use the right words on that. So, in a nutshell, uh, we, we can go on and on with questions because this is where this is where it really happens. Is when uh, you start to really see this in the questions. But this is basically what Agenda 21 is. It's really not that complicated. It's just complicated because it is so interwound in everything that we have. You know, if you look at their Bible, that, that 40 chapter monstrosity, Agenda 21, there's a section in there that mentions that Catholicism, Protestantism, Judaism are non-sustainable. But they, they accept religions that teach submission to authority. So when you take the document, it's an attack on every human being, on the moral core of every human being in this nation. They're at war with us. It's this is a war document as far as I'm concerned. But that shows you what they are. The fact that they say these traditional religions are no good. They're not, they're not acceptable to them. And so it's, it really shows you what it is. Now how many, um, how many people here are veterans that fought in war? Okay, You're veterans. These items right here, land, air, water, and energy, when you're fighting a war, do you not have to control these exact items to win that war? It's that, this is the theory of war. Now, I, you could always bring up, people at this point out in the general public will think that we're going off in left field, that this is just a conspiracy now. That's it, that they'll say this is only about the environment and social justice or poverty. My contention is, what happens if, if this continues, just, just look at this board here. You have every single enforcement mechanism where now you can't do anything without the government telling you what to do. Well, if this continues on further, what happens if this goal changes? We've just effectively given up control of everything through, through uh, councils. The American Planning Association is not a government agency. Again, if you look at the if you look at the list, I have a list of the, uh, of the, I have an NGO list right here. So what is it, like a trade association or something? No, it's just, uh, it's just an organization that's non-government. That's all it is. Oh, you mean the APA? The APA. It's a planning organization. All the planners, if you go to the, any, any planning, um, Stratford Regional Planning, the Southern New Hampshire, any of the nine regional planning commissions in New Hampshire, they all are administered by the American Planning oh, so Association. So it's an industry association? Correct. And as opposed to a government department. Correct. There's a national organization called the National Association of Regional Planning Commissions, and then there's one for each and every state. I have a map uh, somewhere in this pile that actually shows you all of them, but they're, they're set up in regions, and it's all designed again to <laughs> promote right. environmental sustainability. You only hit on environmental justice. Where in all of this about social justice. In, in the policy document, it it's all relates to poverty, and and uh, it relates to poverty. Yeah. It relates to poverty and, and the social and economic dimensions of the environment. The environment encompasses everything. But I don't know how the environment affects poverty, other than the poorest countries are the dirtiest. Uh. 
Well, in other uh, if, if you destroy the environment of a country like Haiti versus, um, what's next to Haiti? Dominican Republic. The Dominican Republic. The uh, Haitian land has been decimated, and that is one of the reasons why they're in poverty, whereas directly adjacent to them, they haven't decimated the environment, and they're just, it's sustainable. Ed, we have an example here in Gosstown, and John Heiko can maybe help clarify, but we had a presentation last week at the planning board meeting from the Southern New Hampshire Planning Commission. And she was charged by the State Planning Commission to give us a presentation on energy. And came with this nice slideshow, 20 pages, and basically was wanting the town to adopt their recommendations, which were starting out with energy audits, but ultimately leading to limiting energy use. And first at the first at the by the town buildings, but ultimately they'd like to get every private property owner to also follow these recommendations. Is that and right? And she followed into planned kind of planned kind of little communities built in the towns with small little housing and, and so planning cluster, yeah. clustering yeah. little and little villages within the town and, and making it so we could have a lot of green space and Small little cluster yeah. uh, yeah. development. The conservation commission was also at that meeting. They got right. They got three million dollars from the federal government to come up with this um, pilot program plan. I mean, we were the guinea pig community. Right. Right. But Gofstown. it's the yeah. Goffstown. But it's the template for other communities. And yeah, they they really didn't look what was physically on the ground in Goffstown. It was just this should be happen here and that happened there, and we want uh, development with uh, retail underneath, and you lived over uh, above, and sure. things like that to keep it's down printed. transportation costs, etc. Et they didn't really ask for our input. No, they're just trying to shove it down our throats, no. and they try to make it sound nice so they get the planning board to adopt it, <coughs> and get the town to adopt it. Right, and they right. and they do this almost at every meeting. There's some sort of a presentation by the Southern Hampshire Planning Commission of some sort of little, you know, little thing, and they they. Right, they input yeah. some sort of a message at almost every one of our And like Karen says, they always use the word conservation or well, sustainability. Well, that's because yeah, they use pretense to control the land. Right. You have to control population. Right. Yep. And they do that with conservation easements, et cetera. Right. There's something you're going to There's something you're going to hear about soon. It's called um, the Wildlands Network. It used to be called the Wildlands Project. And basically, the idea is Think of the noble part of it. They wish to have wildlife corridors. They wish to get all the conservation districts and connect them so you can have basically a, a, a corridor that the wildlife can live in and then we will live in the other ones. Well, this is all Chapter 15 of this Agenda 21. It's called the, Conven the Conservation of Biological Diversity and it's a treaty internationally called the Convention on Biological Diversity. Back in the 1990s, our Senate refused to sign it. They tried to have it signed several times, but they refused to sign it because it's a front of private property. Plus, how the, the senators were like, well, how are we supposed to take land from already populated areas of the American people and just, how are we going to pay for it? I mean, that was basically what they were saying. Oh, that you're going to know to stay on their hand. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, they walk right through my property. Yeah, and they, yeah, don't they, know, do the they don't know that my property is not conservation or connected to another conservation. They restrain your yeah. Yeah. Conservation yeah. officer? Well, well it's, the, it's the bears that now, we really have to. This is, yeah. a map. <laughs> this is a map that was produced by the people. This actually prevented the Senate, the Senate from signing that treaty. Now, this basically is a compilation of it. Now, this is all the way back in, in 1990, so this is very different now. But the red area is where human beings cannot go. This would be the conservation districts. Elchip is all I'll go into Elchip mm -hmm. in a minute. These are all conservation districts that people are not to be not to go into. And then you have yellow areas where are just regulated areas where you perhaps can hunt and hike and fish and stuff like that. And then the green areas where people have to stay. I don't see green areas. There, yeah, from here you can't barely see green areas. No, it's probably my printer, but it's it, it, there actually are areas. Or this map is, is, is a lot Sorry. more red. The more yeah. Right. Now, somebody mentioned. Ed, yeah, and I was just going to say, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody in this room is against you know what you're presenting, 
but we can also understand how a liberal might say, oh, this sounds great. Would you discuss Agenda 21's depopulation goals? Right. Well, this, the conventional biological diversity will do that very, very easily. When you mentioned the uh, cluster housing, they, they, can, they can do this process and take as long, as much time as they, they need to. Because eventually, if they keep going with these policies, you're not going to build in a conservation district. I believe land just got moved over into conservation in where? That, is oh, that what yeah. happened? Yeah. Well, some conservation land got turned into town forest. And the distinction between the two is conservation lands, if there's a timber cut, the money goes into the town's general fund. We can use and do use that money to offset taxes. If it's a town forest and there's a timber cut, the money goes into the town forest account, which can only be spent to buy more conservation land. Now, now, do you see how? Now that's, yeah. very, just, that's brilliant. Yeah, yeah. that, that would, is brilliant. And people don't. And, and I try to explain. And, and it gets presented as this is a zero tax impact or not. Well, and I and I say it, but I'm, again, I was the only one saying it. Well, no, it's not, because if it goes into the general fund, we use that money to offset your taxes. And um, now, the U.S. Department of, in, uh, of Interior, New Hampshire Fish and Fish and Game as the enforcement method to control that conservation land. Now, it's funny that you're telling me about this conservation land, because up by me in, uh, in Wakefield, they just put in 114 acres in conservation easement. Uh, and they're doing it all over very rapidly. If you talk to your friends in the other towns, they're doing it very quickly. Mm -hmm. And they're doing this because this year, <coughs> this year, it's called Rio Plus 20. This is the 20th anniversary of Agenda 21. <clears throat> this year, I'm certain you're going to hear in the news that they are going to try to submit to the Senate the treaty, the Conservation of Biological Diversity, again, to get it ratified. In the past, they couldn't because, you know, there's a lot of land they had to get in place. Now, what the federal government did is they said, we can't, we can't forcibly take in the United States. Well, they, can, they can use eminent domain, but that wouldn't go over politically very well if they took all this land and put it in. In other countries, they did that. In Canada and in Europe, they used eminent domain. They took the land, and that's it. That they took it. In the United States, they decided, well, politically, we're going to have to do this a different way. So what they did is they came up with tax frameworks that will make you, that allow you to voluntarily put it in. And then once they gather enough of the land together, and I, I've heard this in conservation meetings all the time, They'll talk about, and when you go to your conservation meetings, you'll notice, we'll ask them, what are we going to do with all this, uh, all these separate tracks? They'll tell you, we want to link them. Because they're working towards the, the, wild, the wildlands network. Because they're going to put this, they're going to put this treaty back into the Senate. And they're going to tell the Senate, we already have this land in conservation. The American people have spoken. The American people have put it in conservation voluntarily. Why don't we just sign the treaty? Now, yes, the enforcement tool will still be the federal government now, but you have to look past this. What happens later if this dynamic changes? We have no control over the dynamic. Your, your town and your, the sovereign land in, in the state is now ran by the, is enforced by a federal, federal doctrine. Forget the United Nations. The, the federal governments in your town are not doing it. Mentioning the, the, the change that's going to come. I mean, so far they've got this brilliant cool agenda. I mean, who's going to disagree with sustainability? The fundamental problem of economics is how do you take unlimited wants and needs and meet them with limited resources? So that sounds fine. What change do you think they're going to implement that will still have this kind of acceptance? Machines in place to to make it. Because if they keep if they keep reducing population and they keep controlling where you live, they control everything you buy and control the energy you use and control the water you use and all the air you breathe. They're going to be able to do anything. Well, that's my point, though. They're, they've got an argument for why it's good. So, but that's just to get the machine in place. Once it's in place, you can't stop it. Newt Gingrich is running for president, and he's saying, if I'm elected, I'm going to wipe out the EPA. Where else is EPA on? It's on, it's on, it's on, it's on, on wherever it is. Look what's still left. Yeah. 
you know, the EPA, okay, people say, well, the argument I'm given is that the American people have chosen to put in place all of these controls because technically we did. We fell asleep and we allowed them to start all of this L-chip, the, the HUD, the US uh, DA, the APA, we allowed them to do this. So if any one of them actually go down, it's just like the theater of war. You've got all of this stuff to hold up. And then you have, even if you reduced every government enforcement tool, you still have the, the non-government organizations. Right. That'll keep it. That'll keep it going. That'll keep it going because once you've, with, with, any, with anything, once you've <clears throat> been able to get it into, you, you need 22 years to get it fully, it, that's a generation, fully into the population where it's, it's a knee-jerk reaction to think, of course I would want to put energy, the, those green light bulbs in my house. Of course, because that's the right thing to do. So you only need 22 years to do that until you were bought, sold, and, and down the river. The American Planning Association, one of their, one of their uh, policy goals is smart growth principles. Have you heard of that before? Yes. Mm -hmm. that's smart growth principles. Someone told me that our Constitution protects us from, from this so-called outside influence. Can, can we stop the EPA right now? No. We're trying to, we can't. They're, they're controlling what products we buy. If you look, you try to buy a washing machine, you try to do everything. It is, in, it is in, in control of all of that. If you go to, um, if you go to buy a product, anything from Stonyfield yogurt all the way to your, to your laundry detergent, go to their websites, look for the sustainability aspect of each and every product you buy. You will notice they have joined mm -hmm. the agenda. Now, maybe they join it because they think it's good business-wise, because the people now will buy it because it's green, or maybe, you know, it, for another reason. They, maybe they think it's the, it's the noble thing to do, but now all your products are controlled, so they have to, they have to do the products. On Tuesday, we're going to present a building uh, committee, and uh, Parker and Ann Cartwright is one of the moving forces behind that, yes. and that is to um, erratic, try to try to push Ickley out of the state of New Hampshire, first state in the union to do so on, on the basis of its being an assault on the Constitution, specifically Article 4, Section 4, that guarantees a Republican form of government. When you look at what they've set up here and what exists, they have multiple councils per region that meet with one central council. And in, in, in my background, when I taught Russian history, that's called the Soviet. That's what that is. So you're being, you're being denied your traditional voting rights and your ability to put somebody in office or take them out locally because you're in a region now. And these individuals are not elected. They come in and report to the individual above them. It's, this is big. Like you say, it's so complicated for the average human being. That it's how well thought out. How many people are on, the, uh, on their planning boards here? Does any of your planning board members belong to the uh, planning commissions? Uh, one belongs yeah. to the, uh, the DES. He's in charge of, but, well, he's a, he was, now he's a selectman. And yes, I think Barbara is a member. And Barbara is a member of the right, board member planning board. Southern, board. Southern, Southern New Hampshire, Southern New Hampshire region. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, a lot of people say that you know our Constitution protects us from any outside influence, and that, that, it, that when somebody says it's not a legal document, it's not, it's not legal, there's any legal, uh, legal power. Well, your land regulation, land use regulation book, planners know what this is. This is the old last year book. But it, it's showing up in our, in our law. Definition 9B, uh, colon 3. In this chapter, smart growth means the control of haphazard and unplanned development and the use of land which results over time in the inflation of the amount of land used per unit of human development. You read through this. Right. These principles, yes, they started out as an executive order, and incrementally, slowly get into the system, and now they're showing up in our laws. They're in all your planning laws. I and mean, we spoke about the driveways before. You could argue that it's just good planning. Why would you not want to put a driveway there? If, if you know what uh, access points are, you, you have to make sure you don't have a driveway there and a driveway there. But I, I believe it's all interrelated. For UNH, now UNH 
espouses sustainability, works with UNESCO under the statutory framework of, in here. It says, practices on the farm shall include technologies recommended from time to time by the University of Manchester Cooperative Extension. Now you notice that somebody has trouble with their tree or their farm, they really want you to join your Cooperative Extension so they can teach you how to better, better farm. And it says here, practices on the farm shall include. It doesn't say may include. It doesn't say, well, you might you might think about it. It says shall include. So by law, it has to. So it, it's, it's really all over. That's really corrupting what cooperative extension originally was. was. Originally was. <laughs> and it's corrupting our um, yeah. official land-grant <clears throat> colleges. So the, the frameworks were already in place to do this flip. And it's been very incremental. Mm -hmm. well, where it if you look on the chart that you have right here, and then underneath land, one of the key things to add in there that a lot of people don't understand are redevelopment commissions. When you see that word and the authority they have with their casing, takings under eminent domain, that's a huge weapon for these guys now. Under goes, specific control. It, and it goes back to the Kelo versus Connecticut case, which was an outrage by the, the Supreme Court, where if, if you remember, you had Suzette Kelo had a small corner area, <coughs> a giant pharmaceutical concern wanted it. She said, well, it's, it's private property. I get a small business. I only generate so much in tax revenues. But the people in the community, the, the, the pharmacy company went to them and said, if you give us that property, take it by eminent domain, we'll give you more money in terms of revenues for a bigger company. And went to the Supreme Court and they said, yeah, they can do that, which was stunning. Mm -hmm. So it's right in line with how a lot of this works. So those redevelopment commissions, when they come in, people don't understand that for decades they can take, they can take property and then any of the tax money that would have been coming out of that goes to a redevelopment for our public-private partnership. Certain specialized buddies that come in from the outside. So that's that's a big, big part of that. Yeah. When um, um, after the Kilo decision, Keith and I and some others in Tron, Tom tried to take Suter's house yes. as a result of that, and uh, the guy that was in charge of planning and where when we were saying, well, it's not right to take people's property or, or deny them their property rights, his comment was, we do that all the time. But the thing, your presentation so far, a, a lot of it I understand, a lot of it is common sense. If, you're, if you've got four houses going up and it's required to have two acres per house, it would be better if those houses were clustered together and you had, you know, uh, eight acres of old, you know, a free space for animals and stuff. So a lot of it's just common sense stuff. But my question is, now that they've got the structure in place, what's the ultimate goal? Where are we heading from where we are now? Where are we heading? Now let me ask that, answer that with, with the question back to you. What does it look like it's heading to? A lot of it could be rationalized. In other words, controlling runoff is just common sense. If, um, especially in some of the um, uh, farming areas out west and I think down south, they didn't control runoff for a lot of years, so all the topsoil is gone. So a lot of the stuff just made is, is uh, reasonable policy to try to not allow us to decimate the, the land that God gave us. I mean, God told us we're supposed to be caretakers of the, of the land, so therefore, some of it is just caretaking. Um, and, and shouldn't that be up to the individual, not a government mandate? Well, no, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not so, so convinced. I'm not so convinced that the government does have, doesn't have a place in... Um, like, in other words, if you've got land and, and you've decided on your own because it's profitable to, you know, wipe off the entire topsoil of that 100 acres, I don't, I don't, you know, you have riparian rights, you know, the uh, riparian rights are, are something that were fundamental to the Constitution, and that is, just because a stream's going through your property doesn't give you a right to pee in it, because other people are using that also. So when you destroy the environment, it may be, might be on your land, 
but you're destroy, destroying the aquifer that my uh, my family needs to uh, get drinking water from. So some of this stuff is common well, sense. It, we're all right. connected, right? Yeah. The yeah. waterfly in the jungle but, uh, flaps but, his but wings. Gary, and Gary there there's was, no end to it. The the feds had a program, and they said uh, the farm pond that they put in on my property back in the 20s. Yeah. Um, that the animals could drink out of. No longer can the animals drink out of the pond. You're supposed to fence the farm, the pond off from the animals. They, the feds would give you money to put that fence in. Right. However, the, on the bottom of this form said they have the right to enter your property at any time whatsoever. Sure. Not just to see the fence around the pond, but the whole property. No, no, I, I so that's I, I the that. insidious well, the thing. The answer, obviously, is what you're saying. It has to be reasonable, and it has to be debated, right? And chosen by us, yeah. not from above. That's right. the issue. Yeah, yeah some of it is very nice, too. But we're supposed to know right. what we're supposed to make right. choices. I have a fear that this is set up. What well, can be used? The setup could potentially be used. We're running, our nation's running in a huge debt. And uh, as scary as it is, a large majority of that debt is to foreign nations, specifically China. We can't pay it back. What happens when China says, the bill is due, you've got no money, I'm foreclosing. When China decides to foreclose, Look at all the land, all that red stuff. Now it becomes red China. <laughs> You're doing it already. You're I doing should, it right now. I should, I should <coughs> who's, actually, who's actually seen a conservation easement? Right. There's an eminent domain clause in there about what's going to happen when, when and if eminent domain. Now, you really got the gap analysis with Clinton going way back. That was that was an examination of all the properties that could be seized and then put it so they they would have something to take. You know, but you think about this, in 92, they came up with Clinton, the same guy that pulled on Glass-Steagall, the wall of separation between your commercial banks that are sitting on money and not lending to us now, and these big investment monsters that destroyed this economy. So now the average guy is getting pushed off his property, he's losing it. You get Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that are talking about renting these properties. Then you go in this document, and it's talking about changing the demographics in the nation. The whole thing is about power and the concentration of power over people. It's got very little to do with, uh, with the environment, actually, except that the primary assault is on private property, which is the core of the Constitution. You know, it's like the language they use is like the, the Communist War against Viet and the wars of, of uh, liberation. They're not wars of liberation at all. It sounds good, but it's not. It's the same type of thing. Uh, I just got a couple small points. Uh, one is a bill, or a, a special warrant article, I guess it's called, uh, passed last year in Goffstown that disturbed me greatly. And it was uh, not to allow more, and it sounds so stupid when I'm going to say this. You're going to hear a lot of laughter. I'm only allowed six chickens on my property. Why can't I have seven damn chickens on my property? Such a town of Goffstown says I cannot, and if I, you know, I can get in trouble if I have seven. Um, you know, um, unfortunately, it passed because it's going to save the children if we do this. Kill the others. How's it going to save the children? I don't know. That's what they always use. And, and, but the other thing is, uh, Dan McGuire, Representative McGuire, uh, I'm similar. Like our good friend from where that's a selectman, um, I'm similar like him in my committee. 16% uh, of the time I'm totally alone, totally all by myself, because I vote for the, you know, against this stuff. The rest of the uh, 16 members vote for this. He sat in my committee, and normally my committee room will hold 30 people comfortable. There was 80 people, and it was to do away with, his bill was to do away with the planning commission. He sat down and he said, oh my God, and they're all for the Planning Commission. <laughs> and he wants to do away with the Regional Planning Commission in New Hampshire. So he sat down and he said, Madam Chair, committee members, boy, I can feel the tension. You're going to kill my bill, aren't you? But one thing I do know, the vote will be 15 to Burke. <laughs> and that's how this 15 to Burke came about. Uh, so, it, it, and of course, the bill was killed. Now, Agenda 21 is coming to my committee on Tuesday. 
It's going that's to, be, to start a, a study committee. You, it's going to be killed. My committee will not allow this to go forward, and that is disturbing to me. I, I, I pray I'm wrong, but knowing the history that I've been there a year and almost three quarters, um, they're not going to allow this Agenda 21 you know, a, a study committee to go forward because if it does, they're going to be scared of the outcome. Now, you always, how do you beat that? First of all, you always know, you always know that you're, you're in the right direction. First they ignore you, and they ridicule you, and then they fight you. So how do we beat this? The American Planning Association, who will probably be in that room, they actually, the, planning, the, the American Planning Association, if you go on their website, they actually started a boot camp. A boot camp to educate their planners on how to deal with Boot camp to explain. They came out with a truth. They came out with a a myth and truths. Oh, you got a copy of it? Yeah, I have a copy of it somewhere tomorrow. But there's an actual piece of paper that actually has it. It's a two-page paper that somebody's going to probably bring in there because uh, to dispel the rumors of what a Genesis 21 is. That's why it's. You've you got to make sure you're using the right words. You can't say it was part of the UN. You can't. You got to use the right word. But they are fighting it. So you're, you're we're heading in the right direction. Yeah, it, it really, really sent in the big guns. You know, that you were you're making progress. But I'm confused about why. Why would there be a problem with starting a study committee? Why do they want to know? They do not want to. Know. They want to protect. And, and, and I, I'm not going to speak ill of my committee because I like everybody on my committee. And, and nothing against any selectmen, but most of my committee have been or they are selectmen. And the way they vote, and, and it's their vote, so I, I, I respect it, uh, but they vote to protect the town. I have never been a slight administration of the town. Not yes. The right. yes. Right. I vote for the people of the town. And there's a huge difference. And some people say there isn't. We're all in it together. But there is a huge difference. The, the town, in my eyes, the administration of the town, for example, the six chicken rule, they want to control what we do on our properties. And I'm like, it's my property. I can have seven damn chickens. <laughs> and, 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 so they look at that. Where that's why I am 16% of the time I did a survey on it is, is that I'm alone because I vote for the people. This is going to hurt the people. Agenda 21 will hurt the people. So I'm going to vote for this study committee. Most of the others are going to say, you know what? It could hurt the administration of the town that gives us authority to rule the people. And we're only ruling the people because it's the right thing to help the people in that we can't do it ourselves. So their intentions in their head is good, as they see it. And, and I was being a jokingly about the chickens and saying the joke. Uh, but that's what they, they always come back to that. The first step always has to be, for me, is you have to establish that the that Agenda 21 even exists. I mean, you're already talking about conservation easements, and you're, you're, you're talking about study committees, and, and chickens, and planning, and the general populace gets completely confused about what the heck are you talking about Agenda 21? <coughs> That's why, first and foremost, everybody on that committee has to first understand what Agenda 21 is. They have yeah. to understand it. They have to be, they have to be convinced that it's a real document. Because some of them don't even think it's real. I mean, no. they literally don't. And I have something that that's also on the disc. Is <coughs> this? This is the United States country profile of how it's being implemented by the federal departments. So you can bring this in, and it, you can download this. It's not, it's not from any specific group, but it's the country profile. And it, it says, and it, it proves basically, that the federal government has signed an agreement with the United Nations, and they are actively implementing it. It shows, it, it talks about uh, conservation district, districts in here. It explains LCHIP, U.S. Forest Service. It says, how every department has been tasked to push this policy through. And that's what they're doing. So to be on a, on a committee and try to get people to vote to pass a bill to start a study committee on Agenda 21, it's not going to work unless they understand that it actually is real first. So if they don't know what it is, I don't see how, 
I, I see that Bill will most likely fail because they don't know what it is. Are that you going to on the disk? The map is not on the disk. <coughs> this is all. This is all on the internet. If you just, I mean, you can have this one. You can you just look under uh, the Wildlands network. They have their own network. John, that might Could be a useful tool for you, the map, yes. because um, they may, and the fact that the Senate rejected it. Say, look, I'm not on the fringe here. This, it's been presented to the United States Senate. They turned it down twice. Let's take our piece of that map and blow it up big and say, look what we're trying to do. We're implementing something that... It would be extremely useful if you could attend that hearing uh, in, in the committee, because nobody probably knows what you're talking about anywhere near as much as you. Well, everything, I, after how I just did this, does everybody understand what Agenda 21 is, basically? I mean, it's not really that complicated. Yes. And so one thing I missed is, was the U.S. originally a signatory to this, or is it an actual treaty? It is not a treaty. It's, it's, just, a sig so it's just a signed agreement. That's all that is. So it could sort of be, we could remove ourselves, extract ourselves from it. When I say we, I mean the country at any time, right? There was no political pressure. You could, but see, see how well it's thought out? If you did say that we're no longer, I mean, Ron Paul put a bill in, I think it's H, uh, H, what's the bill? Uh, a, a specific bill that Ron Paul put in, which is to get us completely out of the United Nations. Right? Yes. Now that would sever it. Yes. But how are you going to sever all these relationships and all these departments? They, well, they thought this out pretty good. Well. Mm -hmm. So even if, you, even if we were to separate ourselves from the United Nations, which your general individual on your committee doesn't get, those people don't let it, well, how could that not be a good thing? Mm -hmm. us be not, how could us not being part of the UN be, be a good thing for the United States? It's good for us to be in the UN. So most, most of your, general, your average person doesn't get that. Um, but it, it's just, it's, separating us out from the UN, we still have all these things that are already in place. And even if we were to able to eliminate, as you said before, the, the EPA or several of those major things, you still have the non-government organizations that are already built up and they're they're huge machines already. Now, that's what but they've they, had 20 years. <coughs> they're not looking at next week. They're, they're looking at 70 years down the road on what's this going to look like? Right. But you have to establish first to everyone that the agenda is real first because people aren't even asking. Go back to 1933. Street, they don't mm -hmm. understand. Go back to the bankruptcy of the uh, United States of the United States, mm -hmm. and all this. I mean, all this has been in place for a long time, right? And with the United Nations uh, as part of it, and everything being turned over, and I'm pretty convinced that the United Nations controls most of our money supply as it is now. Uh, so this is like a huge ship that you're trying to turn around. And without a huge, without a concerted effort of the, all the people, it's. Think, 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 of, think about. I, I'm this, almost convinced. Think it's about this for one second. Just a few months ago, this country, the Congress didn't even know they went to war against Libya. They're taking our military, the United Nations, and NATO. There's thousands of bombing sorties. The president saying it's a kinetic action. Nobody even knows in the Congress. Now he's getting ready to say I'll do the same thing in Syria. But don't worry, I'll report to you later on. It's insanity. So to think that this doesn't exist, look at that activity, which is, is horrendous. It's beyond imagination. It really is. It is, and it's all to start a bank. It's all to, it's yeah. all to add these countries to. It's dumbed down half the nation, and that's part of the process yeah, with yeah, right, OBE yeah. and the rest of it. First, you have to establish that, that it exists, that it's a real thing. I mean, you, the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro this year is, is the 20th anniversary of yeah. Genesis 21. It is real. These dates, these 1993, these 2003, they're they're symbol. They're not symbolic. They are they are they are real dates that followed another action that happened a long time ago, with the 60 or 70 year uh, bankruptcy of the uh, of, of the United States. This carries on. These dates are not. That's not a lucky date. That didn't happen in 1993 because Clinton thought it was a good time to start it. That happened because he could start it at that time. This is why I think that. It bill deserves to pass if it's just starting. There's enough people. If everybody gets together and says, you know, let's put this to rest. We need to study this on a credible bipartisan basis mm -hmm. and find out what is really happening. Because I still I still contend that if everybody understands that this is this is the, the, the mechanism they're using, everybody would agree, Democrat, Republican, whoever you are, that who's in control of this? 
that's the, that's the whole thing you've got to worry about. <coughs> if, it's, if it's the feds or it's the UN and, and the, feds, uh, the feds following the, uh, the agenda, we're not in control of it. This isn't America. This is not constitutional. How can it be? Public-private partnership. When you prime example, you look at General Electric Corporation. They finance the election. They buy NBC. Okay, they pay no taxes. Now they have all the green contracts to make billions. It's an unholy relationship between specific corporations and the government. That's what runs happiness. Now they're after resources, and they've melted this economy intentionally. So they're pushing us off the primary protection, which is private property. That's what this is about. I mean, it's, this is worldwide. Look at Europe. They've lost their freedom. I mean, it's, they don't even know what's going on. These guys meet, European Commission meets, and then they, they run, the, the European Parliament is a rubber stamp, and they have no, no concept of what's even going on. And every country has to put a 10 year report in. So you can go to France, go to all of Europe, and they all have this 10 year report that they send in. This report gets sent to the Commission on Environmental Quality. So all around the world, this is happening. Right. What New Zealand, what New Zealand, New Zealand, world governments, and, and Australia. What's the real? World government. Of course, it is a world government. Theater and Mayor June. So our report, our twenty-year report, must be done. Terrorism. Most likely, I can't find it yet. So maybe they have it. That's too bad. That'd be handy to have your meeting there. So twenty-year report, everything they've done to implement it. I was just going to say. This may sound very simplistic, but are you aware that the county sheriff has the authority to block each and every one of those federal agencies at the yes. county level? I don't know about uh, I don't know about it in this in this county, but up in Carroll County, our sheriff is very well aware of that. He does he appreciates that whole constitutional uh, uh, authority, um, and I'm confident up where I am that it's hopeful. It seems the further south I go, I'm less hopeful. Well, you're closer to Mordor. Sorry, <laughs> Massachusetts. I'm closer to Massachusetts, right. But I'm, I'm, if, yeah. if you came up to where I live, you'll, you'll feel a lot different. Even the citizens up there know it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, but it's got to be pushed forward. Okay, I, un I understand this. And, I, and the problem with any good lie, it starts out with reasonable um, suggestions. What is the end up? To me, I, I, just watching what's going on over the years, I believe the end game is to have everybody in the city and have all kinds of cameras all around the city and keep everybody in the city where you keep an eye on them. 1984. That to me is what the end game is. But is that in, in Agenda 21 or, or can you point to it? What is the end game? Yeah, what is their end game? Nothing. It's, not they didn't specify it. It's not specified because why would they do that? They're, they're, it's about, <coughs> it is sold as environmental justice and social justice. That's all, that's what it is sold for. You, you're, I don't think you will ever find that out. You can, that's why everybody goes into all the conspiracies because there's really no, this is so well planned out and mapped out that they have everything covered. They have thought of every angle. They listen to what we say, and then they change. They change the game plan. They're going to. They're going to stay. No, they're no longer going to be using smart growth principles as a as a term. They're going to wind up eliminating uh, sustainability as a term. They already got caught with uh, global warming, so now they have to call it climate change yeah, adaptation. They change, yeah, they so they change. It. And what they do is they specifically listen to us. They listen to what we say here, and they change how it's presented. Mm -hmm. So in each and every time, it gets morphed into something. That, we, we can less and less understand. That's why, from from the very beginning, you mentioned about the cameras. Uh, on on the planning commissions, they they basically help the transport. They use some federal highway dollars to help you get grant money again and highway dollars to, to fix your roads. Well, in order to get the roads fixed, they require you to put cameras up yeah. in order to get your money. I I'm originally from Ohio and coming in from this direction going into the state of Ohio, they have cameras across the highway that record your license plate number. They do it here. Yeah. So, so you can't even, you, they know who's entering the state. It's, 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 
it's and and on the committee they go, well, it's money, it's money, it's it's well, they do this. Well, the argument against the seatbelt law was we're going to lose federal money. They got right in the every, every, it's, it's everything's got a string attached, and people tend Is to forget it? where the federal money came from. It came from you, me, and everybody sitting in this room. Anybody seen a thing of the wild, the animals they introduced into wildland areas? You know what I'm talking about? Damn wolves! The Anybody? Freaking wolves the, out type, the types of animals? It's on. You can see it on websites. It's, it's, I'm not making this up. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You do. The genetically altered wolves, over 200 pounds, some of them 220, and now they're coming down on into farmland. They want to keep people out of there. Yep. And they get listen. They get pictures of them and guys that have shot them and they're massive. Yeah, they're, like, they're, just, they're killing all the livestock, and now they're getting close to attacking people. They release them into what Wyoming, Montana, a whole pile of places. That's a con everything's a control on us. That's what it is. I just want to double you. I just want to. You can try that out. Some kind of different ones. Sure, some guys are sure. I just want to backtrack a little bit about the American Planning Association. They went to the World Planners Congress in Vancouver in 2006, and they basically said that uh, that they have the responsibility along with others future generations for custodianship of this planet and its inhabitants, and to those within our own generation who are disadvantaged, especially the poor who lack adequate shelter. And they, they talk in here about, uh, about equity again, and they also talk about the United Nations Millennium Development Goals. They, the American Planning Association, there's also something called the Global Planners Network, it's called the GPN. That's the, that's the one that's on top. Yeah. This all goes against how our, our country was set up, which yeah. is bottom up. Top down. Yep. We're supposed to make the decisions, not top down. So you have a global planning system that's working to promote this policy, and, and, and it's working with all of our. Now, in every country, they have their own departments and forces. Mm -hmm. And you notice they're all doing the same thing. They, uh, they have cameras in Manchester right on the road now. Right on, up on uh, Lake Ave, yeah. watching you. Smart growth. And it goes back to the wolves. About four years ago, maybe maybe a little longer. I don't know. Gary may have been on the fish, fishing game committee with me, but yeah. they were trying to introduce introduce the wolves back into New Hampshire and not by New Hampshire. Yeah. You know, every farmer up there came in and was fighting it because the wolves are going to kill his cattle. <laughs> Even your health health care bill is in there, incorporated in there. And now we know from the discussions they're talking about <coughs> euthanizing people after seventy. They're referred to as the unit. You're a unit, and it's um, it's uh, it's only you know pain killing at age seventy. After that, I mean, there's no operation for no the young people at seventy for heart operation or kidney or whatever. So it's all part of the same type of thing. Tied right in with your schools. Look at Bedford. You know all the anti-religious <laughs> stuff, attacks on a family. Build this most mausoleum to education for, for, 80, yeah, for 800 kids. It's 80 million, and everything takes place in the community right there. It's just, just like one education. It's a Castroite plan, mastery learning, OBE. They want everybody dumbed down, no history. They don't want you to know about the Constitution, the founding of the country, or especially what private property is. That that's huge. Now, and why, they eradicate that. Why do you think that they have to do? That's the only way they can do it. Your private private property is the core of the nation. That's that's a protective sheath for your history, for your your the military history of your family, your your economic history, uh, uh, how those kids are brought up. The state can't know. In private property. You're supposed to be anonymous in that home. When the state drives by, they go, "Geez, how many kids does work have? Uh, what's your what are, what are they, what's their mindset? What's their religion? Are they armed?" Etc. They have to destroy private property. That's why down in Londonderry, where they have they have this stuff in Londonderry, and all of a sudden people are putting their hand up in a meeting, and the investment guys from Spain and says, "How come they're allowed to talk?" And somebody has to tell them because it's a it's a democratic town meeting in New Hampshire. Okay, we're not slaves yet, and the hands are going up saying. We thought you were going to save all these orchards and everything's been cut down. And what's that big path by the highway for light rail? And what do the homes look like? And it's all don't even ask because our planners will show them to you. And now they're saying we're going to we're going to put a thousand people on top of an area where there were 300 before. Those are the stackable units, like Russia, like China, like Romania, like Albania. That's what you're looking at. They're communizing everything. But the element at the top that does it, those are people that only believe in power. They'll use that system. They don't know. They're not necessarily communist, fascist, anarchist. They have a lot of money, a lot of power. Well, That's what you're looking at. Figuring all that out is maybe the first step. 
But try to convince the, try to convince the general public of that yeah. is very difficult. It's got to be put in digestible uh, in a digestible manner. I'd like to take advantage of one second that I'm in a room that has lots of state reps in it and some selectmen in it, and I see this as a selectman where where department heads may come to us with a grant or with something from the federal government. Well, this is FEMA money. We had a snowstorm in October, so FEMA said you can have money to help pay for the cleanup of it. And I'm the only one on the board saying, let's not do, let's not take it, let's reject it. Because either it comes with strings or it becomes a drug that's very addictive money from, free money from the federal government or the state or anyone. So I guess I'm, the argument I get from my other board members is, oh, I agree with you in principle, but, and the but is, if we don't take it, Goffstown will take it. If we don't take it, another community is going to take it. And my answer to that is always, well, it's got to start with one. We've got to stand up and say sure. no, no and make the yeah. message loud and clear. Sure. We don't want it. We'll take care of ourselves. We budgeted for snowstorms. We'll plow our own roads. So the fact that I'm in here with some, some Goffstown selectmen and state reps, it would be nice if... Where wasn't the only, and I, now that I have the balance of how and where, I think maybe this year when that opportunity comes up again, we may in fact get a chance to say no. And I guess I'm hoping to see the same in Goffstown and where, um, and maybe the state of New Hampshire maybe start to reject some money from the federal government. Right. That would speak volumes. Um, driving through Goffstown, I saw the nice um, stimulus money signs about <laughs> yeah. that you guys accepted money for a sewer project. Yeah. That made my blood boil. <laughs> okay, we saw it in where there was a sign that we got 114 part of 114 paved with the Recovery Resources Act, and they put the nice sign basically telling you we we took money in. That's what it is. I plastered a sign on it saying "funded with stolen money" with a broken piggy bank. But it's the truth, and, I, and, I just, and I guess I, I'm just challenging everybody here who has the opportunity to do the same to actually go ahead and do it. And where are there a lot of historic buildings that you're trying to fix? The United Nations document, uh, Historic Districts for All, a social and human approach for sustainable revitalization. In your towns, you'll notice they're going to be, you'll, you'll take money from the National Trusts for Historic Preservation. They are a partner with the International National, it's called INTO, International National Treaty, uh, Trust Organization. This is, again, promoting Agenda 21. If you read through this, it talks about climate change, it talks about managing land in a sustainable way. Again, UNESCO. United Nations environmental programs, it's, it's all involved in this. So when your town takes money for these trusts, I always ask people, we say, oh, we have, we have that grant money to fix our, our townhouse. Well, where did that money grant, where did the grant money come from? I don't know. It's some foundation somewhere. It's pretty yeah. thin. It, it's, it's always Obama's somewhere. It's pretty money. The Office of Sustainability Programs at UNH started it says here, the University of New Hampshire Office of Sustainability Programs, OSP, was established in 97 with a multi-million dollar endowment from an alumnus to develop a university-wide educational pro program linking sustainability co to community life. So, people just take the money. And the so the UNH is gets. subsidized by taxpayers in the yeah. state to the tune of between 50 and 100 million dollars a year, mm -hmm. every year. Right now, yeah. what people can do is you know, let's start, our founders put, to, put together a constitution. I think we should start using it. We need to basically bombard all these departments with departments with 91A requests and ask them, what do you have to do with this? What do you have to do? And make them answer it by law. Because they're not going to lie. I mean, uh, I sent one in to the University of New Hampshire, and the, the uh, dean sent me back uh, a paper stating that they, they work with, they work with ICLA, and they work with other uh, non-government organizations like Cool Air, Cool Planet. Right. Now, they're non-government organizations, and they, they gather money, and they help write grants to get the school money. So if the school needs money, they go to these people, they'll start a global warming seminar or something, and they'll, they'll get grant money for it. And it's a lot more complicated than that, but, 
but this is based. This is basically Agenda 21 stuff, and you cannot. That people, the committee has to understand that this exists first before they vote it down, because with, with all, with, with everything everybody's talking about Agenda 21, we deserve as people to know what the truth is. Prove to me. Let's debate it. Prove to me this is only about environmental justice. Prove it to me. I want them to come to that committee, and I want to hear the other side. I want to hear them tell me. Is this all about this? And I'll still say, what happens when the controls are put in place? Who's going to control the framework? And what happens if this changes? That's it. I mean, everybody would agree. We, we cannot allow a, um, a, an executive order started program to overrun us like this. We have to do what's reasonable. If it's reasonable not to let our neighbor strip all the land off, then that's what local planning is supposed to be. I agree with that. And we go to our local planning boards, and as a people, we decide what our planning is going to be. Why do we have all the state and federal planning? We don't need that. We can do it locally. It's supposed to be that way. Well, why would you have a multi-jurisdictional task force that on steroids that can go into the countryside, like it's a Ukraine in 32, and go after an individual? You know, you need 40 grand in improvements on your on your property. Otherwise, here's the military, here's Homeland Security, Office of Budget and Management. This is insanity. That's, an, that's a huge assault. That's Agenda 21. It's a strong arm division of it coming in to push people off their property at a faster pace. So it's just, it's just that alone is huge. I would say this to them, and I, and I plan to say this, and I have. Most people don't understand this, and a lot of people will take the money because they feel strapped especially in this economy, but the ones that do understand what they're doing in, in fundamentally changing the nation are traitors to the United States of America. That's what they are, guilty of treason. That's a huge, that's a big, but that's a fact. If they understand that they're changing, transforming all the institutions, and turning everything upside down, that's an act of treason as far as I'm concerned. Who said once that capitalists will give you the rope that'll hang up? Okay. Who paid for all this? We did. The enforcement. Look how brilliant this is. We paid for all this. We have been paid. We paid for our own in, in, enslavement, if you want to call it that. You, that might be a little bit too conspiracy for people to think that way. But maybe not now. Maybe now it doesn't appear like slavery because we chose to allow this. So we did choose to pay for it. Maybe not a large percentage of people, but we did choose to do it. So they can argue, well, the American people did speak. The American people want it because they... Uh, they told me that that uh, that we we started the EPA as as a nation. That's an, that was an executive order. Yeah. But when you say we chose, <laughs> I never chose it. No. Maybe the state reps did. As a, as a people, no. we chose this one. <laughs> if we did yes. not, if we did not. Or oh, the senators in Washington, it. Or no, it was the senators, yeah. and, well, and we put them there. The so. Yeah, we chose, but we didn't know that was going to happen. But the that's how our system works. The people fell asleep. Yeah. Well, Ickley trains people. Well, they provide the software, and they'll go into a community, the and they'll is. look for certain individuals that have a certain psychology, and they'll run those meetings. Uh, they'll Delphi those meetings, something from the Rand Corporation, to come out, and they already have a preconceived notion, and they make it look like the community bought into it. But they'll bring in people from the outside, like Sierra stakeholders, and you say, these guys are stakeholders, they don't even live in our community. And, it, and, they're in, and they make it look like you've come up with a plan when it's all their plan. Very, very elaborate. You know, one of the best sites that you can read is uh, Democrats Against Agenda 21 by Rosa Corey. You familiar with that? One, if you see that on YouTube or you read her book, and it lays the whole thing right out. And you say, like, wow, this is, this is amazing. You look at California, the whole Central Valley is destroyed. All the agriculture is totally dust now. That's Agenda 21. And now the dams are going to blow up in uh, Klamath Falls. Those four dams, it's going to wipe all those farmers out. So it, they're literally at war, I think, with the nation. That's how I see this. But this is not a Republican issue. This no. is oh. an American issue. And Absolutely. I don't understand. If you, Democrats, I mean, you know some Democrats, will, you know, agree that this is not right. Anybody understands that this, this is too much control. That this is not going in the right direction. And we have Absolutely. to do that. We have to get to the other the other side and they could uh, so if anybody had any more questions or anything because I think I just have a comment. Um, this kind of touches a little bit of what Representative Hopper talked about here. Our current makeup in Concord, uh, which is gonna last for a few more months, is pretty good. 
And uh, this is too much for the average rep, much less the average person. However, when you actually go into the committees and you look at what the committee's doing, yours accepted. Uh, for the most part, they take it on a grant by grant, allocation by allocation, project by project basis. And these are common sense people. They're just ordinary people. I think you have a good representation at the present time. We've got an election coming up in November. We need to try to keep a conservative majority in place so that this kind of stuff is going to be talked about. Because if you, like I say, you have to break it down into small pieces. This is too much for one person to absorb. Mm -hmm. But once you've got an actual piece of legislation in front of you, tear it up using this information. So this is good for all the reps to have. Um, we need to feed it, spoon feed it to the people. A this little. Is funny yeah. When I did this, I thought this was the easiest way to do it. I mean, just yeah. this is what they're controlling. This is what they're specifically controlling. That's how they're that's how they're specifically using the enforcement. I don't know how you can get any easier than this. You that, can. That, well, it's it is. You've simplified it beautifully for for somebody who has. I think everybody, most of the people here in this room, have some idea, although it's been kind of perhaps nebulous in our heads of, we know this is a bad thing, you've helped us organize it and, and compartmentalize it on that level, but for, for a much deeper understanding, there's... But I think with the general... You've been doing this for how many years? With the general yeah, population general that population is not following this, what we have to show them is what we had 20 years ago and look at 50 years from today, this is where we're going to be if we follow this. And hopefully it's very, very scary between the two, and then that's where the people will say, oh, okay, we can't go down that path. But because if, you, if we show them this, there's going to be people that go, well, what's wrong with it? Yeah. But if we show them what's going to be in 50 years, that is going to affect my great-grandchildren, that is what I want people to see. Well, this I just this is basically just to establish yes. that Agenda 21 is real, that it isn't some conspiracy theory. Yes, everything everybody says about it could be viewed as a conspiracy theory, but you can't argue with this. I don't. I, I didn't compile all this stuff. This is, you notice this is nobody, no no one group's information because I'm like a MythBuster type person. I don't like following people. If somebody says something's happening, I'm like, what's Agenda 21? I'm not going to listen to what they're telling me it is. I have to go out and find out what it really, what do I really find. This is really the only thing I really found that I think the general public could, could digest. Because they, they know these exist. They understand these controls because they see them every day and they hear them on the news and they, they understand this. So this, just to establish it, is the first step. Because if you just start going off on a tangent with, with the conspiracy type thinking, you lost everything. Because right. people are going to say, well, this is just nutty. That's what they say. Now, I tried this out on that Concerned Residents of Wakefield meeting up in, up in Brooklyn, uh, Wakefield. And they had never heard of that one. And when they came out, they understood the basics of it. And what, I gave you those pieces of paper. I'm going to give you these, these discs. Because this is the first step. You have to go and you've got to start reading. And you're going to come to me later. And you're going to find, you're going to find out stuff that I didn't know stuff that I didn't find out. You're going to start connecting it. You can't just, just feed it to people and expect you just to believe it. I want you to wake up your critical thinking and go out there and find out more facts on this stuff. Because you're going to, after what I said today, you're going to notice when you go to your planning board meetings, when you go to your state capital and everything else, you're going to notice this stuff showing up. And you're, you're, it's going to click. You're going to hear it on commercials on TV. You're going to hear it on CNN websites. Like I said, go home and uh, look at your products that you buy in your house. Go to their websites and, and see what they, see you what they kids, have. Do you have kids? Look at their books. Oh, yeah. I'm starting <coughs> to go to the Explorer. As, as a state yeah. legislator, I've been seeing that for the last 12 years that I've been up there. I mean, there was, um, when uh, Dick and I were on Fish and Game, they'd have bills that came down and said that the Fish and Game office shall do this, or the federal government will withhold money. Um, and I was fighting those things, and then on, then I was like, I, I think it was when Karen and I and Dick were in there, they had a, the Speaker of the House wanted to buy all this land that was going up for sale up in the North Country, 
And on the way into the, the into Concord, I, I learned that between the federal and state government, they already own 25 percent of the land mass in New Hampshire, so I voted against it. And it, it's just constant. It, but but trying trying to I, I from what I gather from this from your presentation today is if the if Agenda 21 was merely an organized structure to set up an understanding at the local level of, of what we're doing to our environment and what we can do to change that so that there's more space for animals and things like that. That would be an awesome thing. But what I'm get, gathering from what you're saying is that's not really the issue because that's common sense stuff and having uh, people work on that and, and teach us what is sustainable and what is good for the environment is a good thing. The real problem is the implementation, the extortion, and the fact that it is being forced on from, uh, from the UN and to, from the federal government onto the states and local government and denying us our constitutional rights as a result of that. Absolutely. Through grant money. Did you notice the four Hickley cities all got the same thing? Yeah. And Hickley, Hickley, Wolfborough just signed it in last year. All of them have armor for their police, specialized armor, coming into their towns for police forces. So I, I would tell you, as a student in Russian history, German history, I've taught those courses, you're, you're creating a psychology where your government and police agencies are in a state of latent civil war, civilian population. They're telling you basically, shut up, you know, we need these because of terrorism, whatever. But the fact that those four right there get those grants for armor like that, that's a very frightening thing. Well, Obama's Rural Council, if you, if, you, if you look at who's on the council, Homeland Security is on that council. So those cameras are there <clears throat> because how, of Homeland Security. How many people know that your president is the first sitting president of the United Nations um, General Security Council, which is unconstitutional, it's a violation of Article 1, Section 8? That happened with the So it's an impeachable offense. And nobody even knows that because they won't put anything in the media. He can't be on that and be the president of the United States of America. It's, it's horrendous. Dual loyalty. Well, look what the, the Department Office. of Labor yeah. has just done. Just like that. New labor laws for kids on your own family farm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chapter 29. Strengthening the role of workers and their trade unions. I'm telling you, go home and read this. I'm telling you, you think of any trade unions they affected? Oh, you can't have your kids work for you now? No. Yeah, no. no. What you have to understand, because you have to understand is this, if you study the, United, the history of the United States, you go to, you would go to the original documents, you, go, you look at the founding fathers, their psychology, their mindset, what they studied in history, Federalist Papers, Anti-Federalist Papers, you could look at the committees of correspondence and look at the letters. You go to the socialist side, the communist side, you go to people like Trotsky, call up the revolution by trade, and then he talks about scarcity and says we designed those lines to reward and punish as we see fit. So when our people running for office are saying, well, Obama's incompetent, these guys are incompetent, they're not. They're going in the countryside to create scarcity as a controlling element on you, particularly with food. That's what you're looking at. I mean, it's as plain as a nose on your face. But they cut all your teaching and history in this nation. They, they cut it all out, and it's by intention. They don't teach them anything. You guys, if you go to law school, you know they don't teach a lot on, um, uh, on, on the Constitution, original intent. It's very, very limited. They talk about case law. You know, when you, when you watch the Sotomayor, and, the, and, and she's always saying, yeah, the law, I'll agree to the law. They won't go, we want to know about original intent. That's what I want to know. I want to know about the doctrine of natural law. I've asked guys running for office in this state, how do you feel on the doctrine of natural law? They look at me like i got six heads. They shouldn't be in office. So, sorry I get excited, but you know what? This is, this is huge stuff. It's huge stuff. It's massive. And it's very frustrating explaining it to people. It is. It's very, and I've had guys look at me like, you know, you're in Fort Lomark. I mean, what are you talking about? They no, I'm not. This is, this is really, this is going on. It's not part of the adequate education. You know, like it's you intentional. They cut it out. Representative, you were saying that, that you know this may be great to you know help the environment to be you know be a more environmental steward. But I still say at the end, you got to ask that person that says it's it's just for that. Is that who is in control of this structure? We are not. 
Right. No, that's, that's, that's what I'm. That's what I'm getting. That's a, that's what I'm getting at. Is 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 first present that it, it, it is a, that it, the agenda exists. Yeah. And once you do that, the fundamental problem is that it <coughs> is denying you your constitutional rights by virtue of the fact that it is a top-down control from a, a international body to the federal to the and then to the local level. And they're extorting us with our own tax money to do it. Chapter 28, uh, Local Authorities Initiative in Support of Agenda 21. It's in, it's in there. All the planning commissions are, you know, writing it into your law and, it, and you're accepting it. So it's going to be very difficult to stop. But, you know, just like our founders did with the, with the British, it's the people. We have to do this. If each and every one of you went to, you know, uh, 20, 25 people on your list, your email list, and started getting people involved, this will spread very fast. Yeah, we're going to do this in New Boston. I'm the chair in New Boston. So it'd be great if we could have you over there. I'm trying to put something together on a, on a uh, something I could do electronically. You know, because I'm not I'm a nuts and bolts guy. I'm a framing square dynamite structural steel type guy. But I want to put something together where we do a nice alarm program and then address the nature of socialism, what it is, because that's what this is. When you look at this term right here, from Antonio Gramsci, he's a communist. That's communist terminology. Country is based on individual justice, not social justice. This refers to class conflict. People don't understand that because they, they have never been taught properly. No, that's because that term has been stolen. Yeah. That term was, right. was you've, got, you've, got, you've got Catholic uh, the no. saints that, that no. use that term legitimately. It has been stolen and flipped on its right. Thanks for listening.